Hey friends, I have uh, Vicki here and today we're going to talk, do some coaching, live coaching on time management, productivity, and reaching goals. Uh, so thank you so much, Vicki, for being willing to be coached live and be an encouragement to everyone in our community. Um, tell me a little bit about what you hope to accomplish during our uh, time together. Okay, and thank you, Tasha. I'm so excited to be here. I love having this opportunity to have some one-on-one -on -one time with you. Well, I am now retired from my corporate job, so I've got a lot more flexibility in my time than I've ever had in years, and yet I, you know, weeks go by and I'm like, what have I accomplished? Yeah. So I definitely... If I can walk away today with a 20 hour work week of super productivity planned out, you know, structured, I would feel like I have accomplished a lot if I could implement that. Okay, awesome. What did you do in your corporate job? Corporate real estate. Okay. And what did your routine and structure and schedule look like in that job? I'm assuming since you retired, you did well, ish, well enough. Yes. Yeah. Right. You're not still working there because you underperformed and had a bad job. So I'm I'm assuming you did well enough. So talk to me a little bit about your structure, um, in your previous job. Oh huh. well. Hmm. Uh, I would say well, you had certain things that had to be done, but mostly, I have in my corporate world, you know, not only that job, but in previous corporate real estate jobs, it seemed like it was a lot of, um, a lot of deadlines, you know, uh, contracts, right, with hard deadlines you got to meet, and a lot of putting fires out, so not always uh, proactive, because it was always high volume. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, not, you know, I think in corporate jobs across the board, and certainly in corporate real estate, where a corporation has a, another main purpose, and real estate is kind of a, you know, an ancillary, you know, kind of a side, it's always a little bit um, not, you know, understaffed. Like I say, so, so I'm used to not having the time to go to really think about how to manage time, it seems. So I'm not in a real good, um, hey, how do I do that? Now, of course, I had to have lists and calendar things. Otherwise, you would forget. You know, you'd had leases, for instance, that had part expiration dates and notice dates that you had to, you had to do it. And if you missed that, right? You could be on the street. Um, that's super helpful. Is that helpful? Just you saying that out loud, does that even give your, you some clarity yeah. Yeah. On, on what you need? Okay. Right. So uh, what you told me before that you've already tried when it comes to this topic is a little bit of time blocking. You're having a hard time sticking to it. Um, what's hard for you is trying to make the move to Google Calendar. Google and Outlook Calendar essentially do the same thing. So it really it doesn't matter what you're, it's whatever you're most comfortable using. Um, but let's talk a little bit about this 20 hour work week. So would you consider yourself part-time or full-time? I'm definitely part-time. Okay. And I'm, you know, I'm a network marketer. And I also am a, you know, I have a real estate business of my own as well. So self-employed, two self-employed businesses and, you know, now quote unquote retired. So I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm my own boss of both of the businesses, right? So you got to, you don't have anybody telling you what to do, right? You got to tell yourself. Yeah. Well, that's hard if you don't know, right? You don't know what you don't know. Okay. So where, I, where I'd like to start with you, Vicki, is actually setting up some goals so that you know how to align your time. So in your corporate real estate job, what you had was you knew what your role was, get the stuff done, 
you had mm -hmm. goals, get it done by this date, and then yeah. you were able to move toward it. So um, if you take a step back and you look at your goals, what are some of the goals that you've already set for yourself? I don't want to make any assumptions. And then I'll help you with that piece, and then we'll move to the time blocking. Okay. So I think I want to focus on the network marketing goals. Okay. Um, and I would say I definitely want to increase my number of enrollments every month. Um, I don't know if you want a number. I would say five to 10. Which one? Sure. Five or 10. <laughs> okay. Well, I'd love to do 10. You know, I'd love to do 10 enrollments every month. That's, that's, you know, I do enroll every month, but not, probably not even five. Okay, where are you at right now? Yeah, I'm probably anywhere from, you know, two to four enrollments, maybe a month. So I'd okay. love to consistently do a much higher enrollment of 10. If I okay. Could. Any other goals you're focusing on right now? I definitely need to recruit other builders. So uh, some I've had in the past have changed their minds, gone, you know, to do other things. Okay. How many builders do you want to start each month? Oh, each month? Or each month uh, or whatnot? Um, if I could bring on, you know, one builder a month, I would be thrilled. You know, maybe I should make a higher goal, but um well no second. i mean 10 enrollments a month and one builder a month those talk to each other 12 okay. months of that consistently will put you in the 50 to eighty thousand dollar income range okay um you know with some other variables in play right so okay. um that's that's a good goal that's a good those are good goals those are great goals Okay. Um, I think they're great. Any other things, activities that you have goals around? Well, I do want to follow up consistently with my current customer base. So I want to increase my customer retention. Okay. I, um, I don't have a particularly strong uh, base of customers that are ordering every month. I'd like to increase that percentage. Yeah, some uh, some different things here. Okay, so what I'm gonna I I definitely see some room for improvement in the goals, and I know why you're having a hard time with what do I time block? Because you can't time block get ten enrollments. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the whiteboard up here, and I'm gonna walk you through this idea of like uh, it's just cause and effect, right? So it's called sometimes it's called a funnel, sometimes it's it's just like what we're going to do is a process called reverse engineering, right? What does it take to get 10 enrollments? So we start over here with what does it take to get 10 enrollment, right? We want 10 enrollments. I'll just do it like this. Also, then we have to back it up to say, well, how many people do you need to have a sales conversation with? So either that attend a one on one. We'll need a certain amount of people for that. And, um, you know, sales event, I think in your company, it's a class. How many people do we need for that? So in your world, I just split them. Uh, maybe we need a total. Let me do this up here. Uh, in order to get 10 enrollments with like a, do you know your closing percentage? I don't. Okay. I'm just going to estimate, are you using the outlines that we use? Can we teach you? I have not got that outline. I'm enrolled in your basic course starting next week. Oh, cool. Okay. So what you'll, you sh we should be able to get around 60%. So I'm just going to do the math there. Um, so this means we need to meet with, over the course of a month, about 17 people. So let's say you have a personal, right, an event for yourself. So we get seven people here. And for this one, we're going to write the other 10. So now we're starting to get somewhere. So the first thing we need to block off is available appointment times. Right? 
Right. So we just start to make a list of things we can block off and put in the schedule activities. Well, people don't just show up to a one on one themselves, right? So probably, let's see, we might need to invite 20 people to one on ones. And then we need to invite 20 people to a sales event. So we would put the inviting and confirming, like usually I'll put it in the schedule. And if you're working 20 hours a week, is that four hours a day, five days a week is kind of what you're thinking. Okay, mm -hmm. so you have 20 work days. And so you're really looking at, okay, how do I schedule or confirm, right? I need to schedule one person per day. That can be blocked off, right? This is outreach. But now your question is, well, where are these magical people? So we take a step back and this might spook you a little bit. Are you okay with me just telling you the truth? Yes. Okay. Because I think that, you know, I, I did a, a complimentary coaching similar to this yesterday. And what, what the, the lady I spoke to, she said, everyone always says move into action. What actions? <laughs> Right. And if, if I knew what actions, then I would move into them. And I, I think, is that what you're saying? Right. 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 Your question isn't how do I block time? Your question is what do I put in my, what do I block? So I'm going to focus on that for today. Um, just because we have a short time together. I don't want to make this to be too big of a coaching either for you or for the people watching, but seeing how the numbers break down. So, I don't know, honestly, I think you're looking at 60 new contacts per month that start to accumulate. Um, and so some of the new contacts from this month, you won't necessarily invite until next month or the month after, depending on how all that goes, right? That's a verb, that's a different, that's a different training, which is, I think is what you alluded to. So if we want to have at least 60 contacts per month, then we need to we need to actually time block proactively our networking. This is the piece that is missing for most network marketers. It's the actual time to network. So we did a, I don't know if you ended up doing this workshop, Vicki, but we went through like all the different strategies on how to, like what, what you can do to network. And so I'm just going to put a couple of examples up here and then you can decide later what works the best for you. Like I said, I don't want to make this too, over, too much, <laughs> try to do too much in one simple conversation. So we have things like out and about, right? Or reconnecting. We have reconnecting with previous relationships. We have um, networking events. We have vendor events, trade shows, whatever you want to call them. Uh, we have social media networking, of which there are a few different strategies. Um, some of these can be online, offline. And there's some more advanced ones like recruiting, um, you know, collaborating with other business owners. Right. What we're really trying to do is say, okay, on each of the days that you work, did you meet three new people per day on average? Um, and this is kind of, I, I mean, I think I know the answer kind of to this question. I don't mean to be mean um, when I ask it, but how many new people do you think you meet in a 30 day span? In a 30 day span? Maybe three. <laughs> Maybe three. Not so, per day. Per month, right. probably. Probably yeah. a month. And that that's normal. And it certainly has been normal over the past year and almost a year and a half, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. it's because most people, when they first start their network marketing business and they actually do pretty well, it's because they're in a gathering phase. They've been living their whole life building relationships. 
And so in their first 90 days, six months, sometimes even it goes as long as a year, they're gathering the network from the previous 10 years. But while they're gathering, they're not seed planting. So then they're, I, I mean, I'm from Southern California, so I don't really know if any of these farm things are right. But then basically the land, there's no seeds in the land and they're trying to gather and harvest seeds that were never planted before. And so the, the time that you want to focus on, so most people, they're just doing this. They're only enrolling the people they run into when they're out and about. Well, you add a pandemic into the mix and less people are out and about, right? You're not in a position to be able to smile and chat with, right? All of those things. And even I would estimate before the average network marketer just being out and about probably meets 10 new people a month. Well, obviously that is going to shrink when less people are out and about, regardless of what your philosophies are on the, the situation. That's not really what we're here to debate. It just is how the world is going. Um, and so what we wanna do is we actually wanna time block the intention of all of these different things. So if you were to um, just right now off the top of your head, tell me one or two of these strategies here, I, I recommend to have out and about is always gonna happen. You're not going to not talk to someone that you meet and help them or invite them to whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, but I, I recommend that you have two strategies that are predictable. Because out and about is unpredictable, right? Right. Things that you can put intention behind. So out of these four down here, which you think are, um, are the most appealing to you? Vendor events, although, you know, maybe doing one a month is, is more than I have done in the past. Okay. I'm probably not doing one a month. I have, am doing some, but that if I really worked at it, I could probably try to get in one a month. So I would say vendor events. Um, oh, I'm really not big on the social media. So I guess I would say collaborating with other business owners. I, I have a, an outlet that I need to pursue on that. So, okay. Yeah. And so what would your strategy be for collaborating with other business owners? Because remember, we want to get to 60 new contacts a month. Okay. Well, there is a business owner networking that I've inquired about and I just need to go to it. And it is a referral system. Right. All right. And then of course, as part of the network marketing structure, we want to invite people to host, which will add to this, right? Right. Okay, so now we have some stuff we can block off. Right, how does this feel so far? Yeah, it feels like I've got something to work toward during an hour or whatever. So yeah. the real, the big question that you wanted to, um, that you wanted answered, right, was what do I actually block off? Okay, right. so here's what I would do. Research vendor events is an act and schedule them is an activity to block off, including then the day after you would need to block off the follow-up week after follow-up two week after that follow-up three. Would you agree? I agree. And basically repeat this for business owner networking. You would need to block off open appointment times for one on one, right? Probably to the tune of three per week. So pick the times that are available so that when you talk to people, you can offer them actual times as opposed to when do you want to meet? Um, each day, 
I would block off a, a little block, like a 30 minute block uh, to say schedule one appointment. And it like, I, I don't know, I joked, maybe you were on that call, but it was like one appointment a day keeps the bill collectors away. And then somebody else said something smarter, but this, you know, when I, when I was in direct sales and uh, the equivalent would probably be, I mean, gosh, I was probably making 20 appointments a week. So 10 to 14 sales. So, I mean, the equivalent of like 30, 40, 45 enrollments in a month, right? Wow. So that would, that would have been the equivalent. And it was just really simple. Did I, do I have three appointments tomorrow or not? Or do I have four appointments tomorrow or not? That's it. And so if I didn't have four appointments tomorrow, I would wake up in the morning and I would schedule whatever appointments I needed to have. And so when you start to get in this habit of the first thing in the morning is you schedule the appointments that you don't have today or that you don't have tomorrow, you end up with appointments, right? Um, but in, in your scenario, like for me, it was, I need to schedule four appointments a day. So if they were already scheduled, right, I kind of hit some flow maybe the night before. If I scheduled five or six or seven or eight, then I didn't have to do it in the next morning. I could cross that off my list because it was already, like I worked ahead. So mm -hmm. even if you just put in there 30 minutes um, and I scheduled, right, schedule one appointment, you put it on every day, you can just cross that off if you already, if you had one sitting where you set five. The first one is the toughest. The second one is not that hard. The third one is not that hard. Yesterday, I was like, okay, I just need to record one video. And once I get through the one video, it took me, I don't know, 40 minutes to get through that thing. The next three videos took me like 30 minutes. Because the first one is the hardest. Yeah. Uh, and so if you can commit to, I schedule one, you may be able to keep working ahead. Um, but when you put it in your calendar, I put it in there as not outreach. Nobody wants to do outreach. I put it in there as schedule one appointment. So you have an, you see how that triggers your head, brain a little bit. Right. Um, put some blocks in there. Reach out to 10 people, 10 customers. So you see how being specific with the blocks? Yeah, I do. Um, another thing that will be really good to put in there would be make a plan, a plan who I will invite next week, right? You'll have a few different buckets, people I want to invite to a, um, like a one-on-one -on -one or, right? Or an event, if the event is coming up within a week or, or two. Recruiting conversations. Um, and maybe what we would call wish list appointment, which is a second appointment for someone. So I start to block these areas off. So, so we're able to hit the goals because if you don't have this section over here, the 60 new contacts, Guess what you don't have? You don't have people to invite, you don't have people to attend, and you don't have people to enroll. And so whatever you're doing to create, like how are you meeting new people right now? So you're saying you're enrolling two to four people a month, which is great from a consistency consideration. I mean, I think you're poised to do really, really well in the next six months. Where are you meeting those people? Mm. Oh, uh, socially, I would say some are um, vendor events, some are social events, some are social media, just a few friends, you know, maybe sure. reconnecting. Yeah. And then I do a newsletter and once a month, I have people on there that uh, I've met over the year. Okay, good. So, um, you know, I don't even remember where I met them. And every once in a while, 
uh, someone will respond that has been on there for years that, and they'll reach out to me. So, oh, that's great. That's great. okay, cool. So we just need to quadruple that. Yeah. Right. The intention. So if, I mean, I would, if I were you see, cause I, you, you're, it's going to take a maybe 30 to 60 to maybe 90 days to get the network like to build trust and to feel right to have opportunities to invite i would focus on this contact goal like a crazy person like a maniac okay um this is the number this is what i would track right get a little scratch a piece of paper put 60 boxes on there every time you meet someone new track this because it's going to create all of the rest. Um, and these are the different, these are the different things that you want to put in your schedule. And in 20 hours a week, I think you could probably pull off right now. Um, I think it'd be wise to, to attempt two vendor events and two networking groups until you're hitting that 60 number consistently because nothing else is going to happen until your network is larger um, especially at this point in history so we're playing with a different deck of cards than other network marketers and what i see honestly vicky to be the biggest opportunity is people have not networked for over a year in general, and I don't know your personal situation, but that is a problem because we no one saw enrollments dip for the first three to six months because they had been networking prior. So we're seeing that happen now, and it's going to feel a little bit like rolling a ball uphill. And so I think a lot of people are just going to leave and they're just going to give up, which is going to leave more market share for people that are willing to rebuild their network, which I, I don't think will take very long. I, I think it's 60 to 90 days, but it's 60 to 90 days of hanging in there and putting extra effort into all the networking, right? Because if there was no pandemic, how many vendor events would you have done? Right. So many more, right? Yeah. So those are contacts you would have had to potentially invite now, but they don't exist, which means we have to increase the effort in order to kind of catch up, I guess, is maybe a good way of saying it. Maybe not that good way of saying it. I don't know. But I think that's just the truthful way of saying it. Uh, yeah. So tell me what's going through your mind. Oh, it's, uh, it's encouraging. Um, I'm thinking of some other ways, uh, some other ideas to add to it that I could do and, um, you know, and I haven't even ventured out into the social media aspect really. Sure. So maybe I could spend a little time doing something with that every week and it wouldn't hurt. And um, yeah, it, it, it does inspire me. It gets me started. That's great. Um, if, you, if you do move to social media at first, right? Because you, you said you're starting the foundational mastermind next week, right? Right. And I'm signed up for your social media. Okay. And that one's in January, right? Yeah. Okay. So what I would recommend for now is as you're going to the vendor events and you're going to the business networking group, just make sure you add everyone as a friend. And on social media so they're there and just do whatever you know instead of trying to double dip your professional development that might be tricky um just do what you know right just commit to i'm gonna i'm gonna do a couple two three posts a week on whatever's going on in my life just exist on social media and that will be enough for now uh until you finish that mastermind you're able to uh, maybe put some energy, even in the stuff we have online, will at least get you started before the actual mastermind, like where we really dig in. We have so we have the online. You all have access to the online resources where you can at least put some semblance of something together. Right. Um, 
And I have an Instagram account. I just haven't done a lot with it. I, you know, I have a few posts I've done on the Instagram just strictly with my business, not personal. And I could just do something once a week on it and, you know, maybe try that. Wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't uh, hurt. It wouldn't help. It what? It probably wouldn't help. Oh, <laughs> Okay. So you'd be better off, Matt, like on one platform, okay. gathering everyone you know on one platform and being very social there versus okay. popping in and popping out and popping in and popping out and popping in and popping out. Um, certainly if you're in the learning stages of it. Okay. People that have multiple platforms tend to have an assistant running other platforms for them. Gotcha. Right. So we have, I have a primary platform, which is our Facebook groups. You'll see very little on my personal page because one human can only manage so much social media. Right. And then we have an ops person who copies and does copies that stuff over and makes it Instagram ready. Um, right. But it's not a huge focus. It's not where I spend all my time um, because that just starts to become too much. But if you go into the world of social media, a couple things that you'll want to time block is planning your posts, responding to comments. These are all little things that you can time block. So it doesn't become social media. And then you look at it, you're like, what does that even mean? Right. <laughs> um, time blocking tasks is really, really helpful. So you take the bigger idea, you backtrack all the tasks. So then you have all these tasks and then you time block the tasks, makes it way, way easier to actually get them done. Um, one thing that most people miss is let plan who I invite. That is its own task. That's true, yeah. I'm making the list. So if you're going to do customer retention outreach on Friday, well, Thursday it makes a lot of sense to prepare your list so that when you enter that block on the next day, you can just grab the list and start going. Yeah, I think a lot of it is the, uh, yeah, the preparation, as you say, I need a, I've even thought of, of uh, I pulled out my old index card, you know, mm -hmm. the, the old manual oh, that, system yeah. we used to do in real estate, you know, 20, 30 years ago, where you grab the index cards and you, call 10 people a day or whatever maybe I should start there for and then eventually put them in electronically just hey here's my 10 customers I want to follow up on because like you say you got to do some the preparation one way or another I've got to I've got to make a list of the prospects and add to them I've got to make a list of the and have an organization of the, yeah. who to follow up with. Mm -hmm. um, so, and maybe I spend a month doing that. But I don't think I don't month, you know, it'll mean, take that long. I think you can do it as you go. As I go? It's okay. not imperfect action beats perfect inaction. Every okay. Time. Maybe that that's really good advice because... That's what I think. Oh, I've just got to do all this, get it all organized before I can do it. So just start is what you're saying. Get tomorrow organized. And I get caught up in this too, right? Because so we're we're going to start a productivity mastermind in, in a probably by the time this airs in a couple of weeks, which is why we're doing the live coaching, right? How it all works together. And in the perfect world, the most productive thing would be for me to record all my videos at once. And to the next day, record all my videos on the other topic and the next day to record all my search calls and then, or plan them all, right? Like that's flow. That's in theory, the most efficient. But at the end of the day, the amount of organization it would take me to get to that level means I would never start anything. And so for me, it's so much less stressful to say, okay, well, I have a search call tomorrow. So I need to put 20 minutes in to plan tomorrow's call, right? Do I need to plan a call for three months from now? In fact, 
The reason I don't plan that far in advance is because it'll likely be obsolete by then. Right. And so then we're always getting ready to get ready to get ready to get ready. Where realistically, the, what you actually need is a notepad. Right. After you get off this call, brainstorm. You probably during this conversation thought about 10 people that you could follow up with. Yeah. Yeah. So write their names down and go follow up with them. Yeah. See, we, we're commission people which means yeah. we only get paid for results. We don't get paid for style, right? Uh, my OBGYN told me, you don't get a special trophy if you end up with an emergency C-section. We ended up, I ended up with an emergency C-section, right? It's not like you lose. I still have beautiful children, All right? Right, in sales, there's no points for style. That's so true. So. Right. And, and we, I mean, we kind of joke about it. It's not, I'm not saying you don't need to be excellent, Vicki. I'm just saying at what point is there, there, here's this quote I got today in my inbox. And it says finishing projects is part of what it means to deliver high quality work. It's not high quality. If your perfectionism prevents you from other fi ever finishing. So your choices are perfect organization and never helping anyone or helping people imperfectly. Uh, Karen, my business partner, which I'm, who I'm sure you know, she sent me this quote once when I was in the middle of just a mess. And she said, um, it said, I, I saw that you were perfect and I loved you. And I saw that you weren't perfect and I loved you more. So we have to ask ourselves, do we, what's better, imperfect action or perfect inaction? And which one actually helps people which one actually solves problems and which one actually creates income. And I would want to just encourage you enough to start. Right. And so some of the questions you asked me and I'll, I'll just answer these for you offline. Um, but you had said, well, how, how it doesn't matter if you use Outlook calendar or Google calendar. It, it doesn't, matter right now sharing your calendar isn't the priority right grabbing a notepad and writing down the people you want to call so that you can do your schedule one appointment is the priority because if you don't have appointments on your calendar vicky you're you're not helping anyone you're not making any income right because you're not making an impact yeah what do you think i can see your wheels or uh, yeah, right uh, analysis. What is it? Paralysis by analysis or anal whatever. Yeah, well, because you're you're used to review contracts, right? Yeah, yeah. So I I noticed this with a lawyer. Uh, we work with a lot of professionals. Are I I think it's something about my style, or you know, I I I have a type, I guess. And they're used to very precise corporate jobs. So this idea of not dotting every I and crossing every T, that is what's foreign, except it's a different type of job. Right. Right. So like my clients who are previous nurses, they're like, if I don't know something, it's life or death. But yeah. in entrepreneurship, if you don't know something, the response is, that's a great question. I've never heard it before. Let me get back to you. That's right. Right. And so we do want to bring our success habits from our previous life in. So I would definitely recommend that you set deadlines. Like Vicki, schedule two vendor events by next Tuesday or you're fired. Because right. your paycheck might have already fired you. Yeah. <laughs> right. If you operate well with deadlines, give yourself some. You probably noticed that when you were just sharing that, right? Oh my yeah. God, deadlines. So it's yeah. like, I have a board that says must do by 723. And then I have a content that says would be nice, right? And so by tomorrow, close a business. And if I don't get it done, sorry, Tasha, you work on Saturday. Because <laughs> you have two more pieces of content to get done. Yeah. That is my deadline. And I operate in that way because that's super helpful for me. So that's a good habit from corporate that you want to bring over. However, if it was your job to audit contracts, you were rewarded for your perfectionism in your organization. Right now, it's not transferring quite right. 
Yeah, I'm, it's, I'm, I've got so many epiphanies and light bulbs going on. <laughs> I hope I can retain them after, you know, the good thing is uh, I'll be able to watch this recording, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, why don't we, why don't we stop, stop talking so I don't explode your head? Um, what would you say, Vicki, was most helpful for you? Let's just consolidate that a little bit. Oh, wow. Uh, well, something I know, but still to review it, you you got to back into the, you got to set the goal and then you got to back into it. Yeah. yeah. That's important. Good. And then you got to time block that backing into it. Simple. So it's a numbers game, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, no matter what we do, really, it's a numbers game. So if you want 10 enrollments, got to make 60 contacts a month and got to time block that time. And, you know, I got a time block making 60 new contacts. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. <laughs> also can be done an hour or two a day. Yeah. Right? In your business, right? I'd say 50% of your time would be networking, right? So imagine if you spent two hours a, a day on average, right? One vendor event would probably take one whole day out, right? but out of an allotment of 10 hours a week, that's still only five of it. You could do a vendor event every week with the allotment that you have. And then would you have a problem enrolling 10 people if you did a vendor event every week? Um, no, no. Isn't that, so. isn't that cool? Yeah. Um, so what's really exciting is that you can do this. It does seem attainable. Then the problem is now you have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, now comes the gut check of, you know, I think we all, when we don't know, we can kind of, I do this, kind of hide behind, I'll hide behind, I don't know. And then when I know, I'm like, oh shoot. And I have to, now I have to put myself out there. Uh, now I know better. Now I know better. Now I have to do better, eek, right? Because when we're thinking and we're strategizing and we're organizing and we're learning, we are not in danger of someone saying, no thanks. And now, unfortunately or fortunately, you are in danger of someone saying no thanks at very high rates. But I have this quote that my client Rebecca shared with me on a podcast that we did together. And I, it was so good, I wrote it down and I put it here. And she said, failure is always on the table, but so is success. We focus so much on the I don't wanna fail or I don't wanna look silly instead of that. But what if the other thing happened? Right. What if the success happened? I have no doubt, Vicki, if you've been having three to five new contacts a month and enrolling two to four people, I mean, I can't even imagine what happens to your business just by saying, hi, I'm Vicki. Nice to meet you to 60 people. You don't even have to invite them all. There's not like you don't even have to worry about rejection because you don't have to invite them all because you have so many people. Mm. Right. You don't have to be so worried about any of the things because the math works a little bit better. So I'm excited for you. Anything else you want to ask while we're on camera? Uh, I guess anything not. Be helpful for others or anything that you want to share with our community? Uh, I don't think so. Man, we've covered so much. It's been great. Uh, just so thrilled for this, this opportunity with you. You're just so talented. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that compliment. Yeah, you're, you're gifted, all right. Thank you. You guys all hear that? <laughs> yeah. Mom, yeah, are you listening? <laughs> all right, thank you. Practice. We'll, we'll wrap this up. Thank you so much for being vulnerable um, and be willing to share your story and your challenges. Um, I would never sit in your chair, so I have way too much pride for that. So I want to I want to tell you from thank you so much for being honest about all of these things because I think it's going to help a lot of people. Thank you. I hope it does.